Ann Messerschmidt, the Environmental Resources Specialist with the City of Lakeville, and thanks for joining us for another Nature Connections. We're here today with Kurt Kudrin from the Soil and Water Conservation District. Kurt, how are you doing today? Good, how are you? I'm good. We're here today at a project in Lakeville um, that's associated with our Blue Thumb program. Um, but first I wanted to talk about a little um, what the Soil and Water Conservation District does for the residents and also for the city. Well, uh, the uh, Soil and Water Conservation District works with residents throughout the county. So we work within Dakota County. And Dakota County is somewhat unique in that uh, the northern portion is developed, and so there's a lot of urban areas and suburbs, and the southern portion is mainly agriculture. Uh, so we kind of work with, in the southern portion, we work with farmers for erosion, sediment, sediment control projects, uh, grass waterways, buffers, and whatnot. Uh, and then in the northern portion, we typically work with stormwater and uh, stormwater runoff and various pollutants. So trying to keep our rivers, streams, lakes, and wetlands clean. So uh, yeah, so we have a, a number of programs that we work with. Uh, this particular project is through the Blue Thumb program. And so the Blue Thumb program is uh, uh, basically, it's a, a program that helps connect the dots for homeowners to install water quality projects. So we have a lot of residents that are that are interested in doing something, uh, but they don't necessarily know where to start on that. And so we help them uh, put together plans and uh, kind of walk them through the process of doing it, uh, connect them with the right plant suppliers and uh, and materials that in the in the end they're left with a successful project. And what's also unique about this project is you also provide some grant money to do this. Is that correct? We do. So, uh, so residents that go through our Blue Thumb program, uh, which is a, a series of classes that uh, discuss the water quality issues and then uh, help them put together that design, uh, are eligible to apply for a Blue Thumb grant. So this year we have up to $250 per project for the, the materials and plants if, for projects that are installed. And so the, the nice thing about that is that uh, people who receive the grant um, we're also eligible for us to come out and work with them. Um, so we'll do an initial site layout um, where we'll, we'll look at the property, we'll, we'll uh, kind of put that, that shape in place, uh, we'll set some grade elevations, uh, discuss the whole process of, of installing it and what they need to do to prepare the soil and make it so that it's a functional project. And that's really, I think, the unique part that makes it so such a great program is because that's it's kind of often the stopping point where people are like, okay, I want to do this, but now I'm stuck, I'm kind of confused. And, and that's exactly what we found, you know, residents, they want to do it, but they just don't really know how, and they want it to be a success, so we're there to help facilitate that process. So you just want to kind of do a brief overview of what you have laid out here and just kind of show what, what we did for the homeowners here today? Sure. You did? Um, so here, <laughs> the, uh, we put together a plan on this project, so these residents went through our Blue Thumb program. Um, they had a, a full plan with uh, the plant layouts, materials, and everything they needed to do. And so at this site, they've already got a water source, so they've looked at their, their rooftop, it comes down through a downspout, and it, it comes through a, a pop-up structure in the yard here. And so what we're going to do is uh, put a rain garden around that area, so when the water comes out of the downspout, it can fill up the rain garden and soak into the ground there, rather than running down across the street, picking up pollutants and, and entering our lake streams and, and rivers. So uh, it's, it's fairly simple. Uh, basically, we're gonna be digging down around that, that pop-up structure, using the soil that we dig out there to build a, what we call a berm, or a small raised area on the outside, and that's to hold back the water until it can soak into the ground. Uh, we also do some soil amendments, um, so we'll loosen up the soils underneath, make sure that they're not too compacted for the water to soak in, um, so that allows the water to soak in where it, where it lands and it doesn't leave a pool of water. You know, the last thing we want to create is a mosquito pit. Mm -hmm. We want the water to soak in with it a minimum of 48 hours. We usually shoot for about 24 hours to have all the water gone from the surface. So when this is done, um, it'll be a mulched bed, um, and they're using uh, native plants in this one. So they'll have a lot of plants that originally grew in this area, and that'll attract a lot of butterflies and birds and wildlife to it. Yeah, I think this is really gonna turn out awesome. This is quite an ideal situation, and it'll really look great when this is finished. So. Yeah, I think it'll be a, a great amenity to the property. Absolutely. Well, now that we kind of covered the blue thumb and uh, the first steps in, in the, your helping process. Um, why don't we go take a look at a rain garden that was done a couple years ago to get a better idea of what these will turn out like. Sure, sounds good. All right. All right, so here we are at the next rain garden we were gonna check out. It's from a couple of years ago. Do you wanna kind of explain how this one works? Sure, so this one uh, was done by the homeowner as well through our Blue Thumb program. And in this one, we've got uh, rooftop runoff that comes through the downspout, very similar to the last, and it runs through a dry creek bed and it's uh, captured in the rain garden here so that it doesn't run out into the street. So all the water that comes off the rooftop through that 
uh, dry creek bed will soak into the ground. Uh, it's great for the plants. Uh, plants are doing great here. Uh, looks like in a couple weeks we'll have a lot of great blooms out of this. Yeah, it looks like we have a good mix of cultivars and natives here. And what's kind of special about this rain garden is we did actually feature it um, when we were building it on how to build a rain garden. You can check that out on YouTube or on the city website as well. Yep. All right, so let's go check out um, another project that we have down near the old public works site that's kind of different from the rain garden and blue thumb thing. Okay, All sounds right. good. Great, thanks. All right, here we are at the old public works site. South Creek is just around the bend over there. Kind of put in this special project that doesn't look like much on the surface, but you want to give us an explanation of what was going on here? Sure. Well, this project is part of a study with the Vermilion River Watershed Joint Powers Organization, and they received a grant to study some of the thermal impacts to the trout stream. And so looking at this area, we have a big parking lot that drains in, and it initially was going right into the trout stream. And on hot summer days, you can imagine that parking lot getting really hot. When it rains, the water warms up, and we have warm water going into the trout stream, which the trout don't like because they can only handle cool temperatures. If it gets above about 72 degrees, the trout start to die. So we wanted to prevent that, and we also wanted to study what practices would work to help cool off that water. So what we have here are two underground rock cribs. They're big chambers that are filled with rock so that when the water comes in, it gets cooled off by the, the cooler rock underground. And when it outlets on the other side, the idea is that it will be cooler and have less of a heat impact to the river itself. So uh, in, in each one of these, uh, we have an inlet pipe and we have monitoring equipment at the, the upper end of the, the rock crib, at the lower end of the rock crib, and at the outlet where, we're, where we are recording temperature every five minutes and so we can see what the change in water temperature is from when it enters the rock crib until it leaves and what impact we're actually having on the stream. Great, so yeah, it's, this is just kind of one of those unique partnerships through a number of agencies where we're able to study something more in depth, get some answers to maybe put in place some projects in other places where, it, where it's needed to cool the waters. Yep, and, and the idea is if this project works and, it's, and if it's effective we'll be able to implement it in other locations and, and use it in the future. Exactly. Well I just wanted to thank you for coming out and kind of highlighting some of the things we have here in Lakeville. If people are interested in these projects how can they get a hold of you? Uh, there's two ways. You can either uh, look on our website www.dakotaswcd.org. Um, we have a lot of information on the different practices and different th services we provide or you can contact us directly. Our number is 651-480. 7777.